Let's take a look at the following class. I'm about to show you a magic trick. Now, it probably looks pretty familiar to a lot of developers out there. You have a mono behavior which will interact with other components that happen to be on this game object. In this case, in our awake, we get the rigid body and the collider, and we'd probably do something with them during gameplay. Now, without any alterations to this code, it will run perfectly reasonably and happily, but not efficiently. You see, when the game processes that awake at runtime, it will have to go and get those components. Basically, it has to do a little bit of legwork for you. Now, the first part of my magic trick, I'm going to call the setup. You see, in this model behavior, we always require these components. Now, at the moment, when we add a new game object, we'll have to remember to go and add the other components. Otherwise, we'll get a missing error later on. So we can add an attribute require component, and this will add the two component types. Great, we always love a bit of tools automation on this channel. Now, the next part of this magic trick we'll call the turn. Instead of making the game do the work at runtime to get our components, we'll save the effort by making our required components serialized fields. Now all we have to do is drag and drop those components in the inspector but wait, here comes the reveal part of the magic trick. We don't need to do that drag and drop of those components. Within our mono behavior, we can use a rarely used function like start and awake that comes with our mono behavior base class and it's called the reset function. If we move this awake code into reset, then when we add our component to our empty game object, not only will it add our required components to that game object, but it will also fill them into our serialized fields as well. You see, reset is called every time we add our component to our game object, or when we press the reset in the context menu buttons. Just note though, that reset is only called in editor mode, so don't go populating it with runtime functionality. And hey presto, the rabbit disappears and the magic trick is complete.